Hi, I'm Tim Can. This is the typical alcohol stove made from a 12 ounce beverage can like this. It's a double wall design, inner wall, outer wall, primed from this open bowl, 16 burner jets around the shoulder, made from these three pieces, the top of the can, the bottom, and the inner wall from the center section of the can, shaped like this. The trend has been to go smaller, so this is the same basic alcohol stove. It uses the same three component pieces, but made from a seven and a half ounce mini can. But sometimes, you need to go bigger. Whether you need a larger flame pattern for that wider pot, you want a more stable base for the cast iron skillet, or you just need more fuel capacity, Foster's beer can help. Premium ale, lager, either one works. Let's take a look at the fuel capacity comparison. These are the beverage cans I use for alcohol stoves. Juice can, 7.5 ounce mini, 12 ounce beverage can, the Foster's beer can. I cut all these bases to exactly one inch tall. Capacity in the juice can is 50 milliliters, 60 for the 7.5 ounce. The 12 ounce is 80 milliliters and the Foster's beer can is 110 milliliters. The first step is always the same for me. Scrubbing the paint off the part of the can that's going to show in the finished alcohol stove, in this case the top about inch and a half, I use a green scotch bright pad wrapped around the can before I've opened it and I scrub back and forth with it in my hand like this. It takes about a minute and a half to scrub the paint off like I've done this one. And if I want a finer finish I can always come back with a white scotch bright pad but use the green one first to take the paint off. For the next step, I need to mark for the holes that are going to be the uh, burner jet around the top of the can, and I need them to be a half inch down from the top. I've got these two inner wall templates for other alcohol stoves that are a quarter inch thick each. So two of them stacked up equals that half inch. Turn the can on its top, and I've got a sharp pencil I'll put on the two templates and rotate the can against it. And that makes a nice line in the right spot for me all the way around. Sixteen burner jets is just not going to do it. So instead I'm going to do twenty-five. On a strip of paper I measured out nine and three-eighths of an inch and made a mark and I marked points every three-eighths of an inch for the burner jet holes. Now I can tape this together into a tube lining the zero point up with the nine and three-eighths inch mark like this one. Put that over the top of the Foster's can and now I can mark the intersections for those burner holes. 25 holes. I'm going to drill with a Dremel. I'm going to use a handheld Dremel with a number 54 bit, it's just over a millimeter in diameter, to drill on these 25 intersections and I'm going to try and drill as straight as possible so my bit doesn't wander off. For the next step, I need to cut the top out of the can before I ever cut the pieces apart. The Foster's can is considerably thicker than even a 12 ounce beverage can, so using a sharp utility knife down the base of this channel, it's going to take several revolutions going around and scoring a line before it starts breaking apart. It will take many more revolutions than it would for another can. That took about four minutes, and I had to change utility knife blades in the meantime. This inner edge is going to be sharp and jagged, so I'll run around it with a pair of needle nose pliers.
better. For the next step, I need to cut the can into its component pieces, one and a quarter inches for the top, one inch for the bottom, and we'll cut the center, the uh, inner wall, out of this middle section. But first, I'll cut the bottom. And if you've seen other videos of mine, you've seen the Tim Can jig before. It's an adjustable wooden block that has a hook blade underneath of it. And that hook blade, when you rotate the can against it, will score a line. I'm going to set it for an inch. I'll rotate the can against that hook blade and score a line. You want to feel the blade drag to know it's cutting and removing metal. Like I said, these Foster cans are pretty thick, so it's going to take several revolutions against the blade. If you have some other method for scoring a line around here, I've seen others that work, like just putting a straight blade uh, in the pages of a book or something at the right height, that works too. And that should do it. I'll reset the Tim Can jig for an inch and a quarter. And score a line around the top. In another video I show how to make this Tim Can jig and I give you in the description where to find the hook blades on Amazon. And that should be enough. Now I can pop the can apart. I hope. Just that easy. And the center section, I'll cut open with scissors. One more thing I need to do to the top. These two eventually are going to, the top will eventually go over the bottom, so I need to stretch out the top, and I'll do it using another Foster's beer can. Don't skimp on this step of stretching out the top, or you won't be happy with the result trying to get the top to fit over the bottom. To do it, put this top piece over an unopened can, the bottom of it, at a slight angle and then press it on. And you're looking for it to make a raised ridge to show that it's stretching the can out. Like that. And then pull it back off, rotate it to a new part, press it on again, and you'll get another raised ridge. You want the raised ridge all the way around the top so this will fit over the bottom. We'll hope that's enough. Now I can turn to the inner wall. The inner wall is this shape. It's very curved. The reason it has to be that shape, the inner wall needs to fit down in this groove, the bottom of it, and up under this inner rim. Those are two different diameters. You can see this upper rim is larger than this base. 
So the inner wall has to curve, or has to taper from this rim down to that base. So it really needs to be a cone shape. And that's what you get when you make a curve. To make a pattern for the inner wall, you're going to need to draw two radii. I've already marked a center on this piece of paper, and I made a mark 8 inches away, and another one 9.5 inches away. You can use a pencil and piece of string, but I've got a large enough compass. I'll draw the first radius. I'll reset for 9.5 inches. And I'll draw the second radius. And the length, point to point, needs to be nine and a quarter inches. So from this point to this point straight across is nine and a quarter inches. And now I can draw the end lines with a straight edge lining up with my center and that mark. Now I can cut this out and that will be my paper pattern for the inner wall. If you want to make just a paper pattern that's fine. I transfer my paper patterns to this eighth inch or quarter inch masonite so I got them permanent. Now I can just cut around it with the utility knife blade. And I should be able to pop it out. Now, this curved shape wraps up to be that cone shape, so this base will fit in this bottom channel perfectly, and at the same time, this top will fit under that upper rim. I like to cut a little nick in the bottom. and then fold up the corners to hold it together and this will become a drain hole and I actually need two more I'll use a hole punch so now I've got three drain holes in that inner wall so alcohol can flow from this bowl to this evaporation chamber between the two walls. And now I can put it together. If everything works out right. And I use a shim, just a smooth piece of aluminum, for the last little bit. Pushing them together, make sure the inner wall stays behind this upper rim on the top piece as you push them together. You don't want to hear it rattle looks good. I do some final finishing on mine. I polish the bottom. I've seen people use this as a reflector to start char cloth aiming it at the sun. I'll do it over at the drill press. Uh, actually we're finished now. If you don't want to go any further than this that's fine. But I'm going to polish the bottom. At the drill press I'll charge this cloth buffing wheel with white buffing compound and then polish the bottom.
nicely polished. Last step, test it out. I only use denatured alcohol in my stoves. I don't use isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. Bigger stove, it will probably take more than 30 seconds to prime. Not bad time. There you go guys, a large stove for when you need it. Thanks for watching.